This is the quickest and simplest sock pattern I have ever knit. If you thought knitting socks was fiddly, required super thin yarn and extra small needles and really good eyesight, you're right. At least it does when knit with a traditional heel and gusset. And I love traditional socks. I will still knit them. This was a very different experience. These socks look a bit like a tube sock, but I threw away my last pair of gym style tube socks back in 1995 and I never looked back. So why do I like these? These are different. See how they curl upward in a little smiley face? It's like they get it. They know that knitting a mindless worsted weight pair of socks is a recipe for a peaceful weekend. I don't know about you, but I could use some more of those. This is Christy Archer's Simply Irresistible Worsted Sock Pattern. She has shaping along the front and top of the sock to separate it from a typical tube sock and it creates the shaping that fits the foot better. There's no heel to worry about here. So you don't have to obsessively measure while you're knitting to make sure you don't miss the exact perfect place where a heel should go or else the sock won't fit. You can knit as much or as little as you want to and the sock will still fit you. So you can make it short for a quarter sock or a crew sock length, or you can just keep going full on pippy, you freak. And the ribbing expands around the foot which makes it really handy when you're knitting for a friend and you don't know the exact circumference of their foot, which firstly, what kind of friend are you if you don't know the circumference of your friend's foot? This ribbing will contract or expand and kind of make up the difference. There's a lot of wiggle room in your sizing for these, so it's okay to guess. Ever try to turn a heel or work the gusset stitches in the dark? I always, always lose a stitch. I seem to get most of my knitting done at night in the soft glow of streaming. Mother, mother, this is a real problem for me when making socks, but these were so much easier. Once I have my cast on, I just knit until I was ready to make the toe. I did use stitch markers to delineate where the little stitch pattern was, and literally I didn't even look down. I would just knit ribbing and at the stitch markers, knit my stitch pattern, which is always easy to memorize, and then go back to ribbing. I did not even have to look at my work, just knit on into oblivion. And did I mention that these are worsted weight? They knit up so quickly. This took two days for me to knit in very short knitting se sessions, but one knitter, several knitters in our knit along actually did a sock a day. So in two days, they had a pair. Another jumped into the knit along at the last minute when they realized you could use Wool of the Andes worsted for this. And who doesn't have a stray ball of Wool of the Andes floating around? I actually used one ball per sock and I had this much left over from each sock. I made mine a bit longer than the pattern called for. I think I added maybe 12 rows extra. Still had some leftovers, so I could actually make this an even taller sock if I had wanted, and they fit really well. These are chunkier than my average socks, so I will use them as house socks or bed socks, as Christmas gift socks. I probably, though, won't use them as oversized socks for the mantle like I have in years past because, I mean... <laughs> Come on. My first pair of these to make were actually a sport or DK weight version that I achieved that the right gauge with a fingering weight yarn held with lace weight mohair. This is Vine blitzed yarn with Stranded Dye Works lace weight mohair and a little bit of knit picks at the toe and the cuff. And by holding my lace weight with the fingering, I got about a DK weight size yarn. However, if I had left the lace weight off, I really still think these would have fit with just fingering weight yarn. Christy has patterns in her collections for fingering, DK, and worsted weight, 
but you can really play with those yarn weights by changing your cast on for the circumference of the foot or by doubling up your yarns together and it's a great way to use stash yarn and again when you combine different yarns to make a worsted weight you have a really quick gift for someone. I knit the medium size, but I actually think because of the ribbing, I could have knit a small, I wear a size eight shoe. I think I could have made a small work, but I like the extra cushiness of the medium. These socks are a great way to use your stash because you could really play with that cast on number. There's really no math to these. You choose your cast on number and maybe the amount of stitches you want in your shaping stitches on the top and that's it. There's no short rows. There's no gusset to figure out. There's really no math to these. And I love knitting socks, but I hate math. So for Christmas, for family members, I think I'm going to do some more worsted weight socks, possibly even holding mohair with them to make them super cozy house socks. Maybe not. I definitely wanna use up my stash because we are trying to use stash here. And I'm sharing this because it's a really good stash buster. I also want to do a pair in fingering weight for me. Yes, I will be using tiny needles, but I won't be stressing out about where to put the heel. I'm just going to cast on and enjoy while I watch something late at night on TV. I talked with Christy on a live stream on her channel, and she discussed different sizing options and which socks seem to work better with what kind of shoe. And she did mention that these the mohair socks tend to slip when she wears them in boots like these. Now, I don't know about you, I have yet to find a handmade sock that does not slip when I wear my docks, especially this type of shoe. They always do. I just don't wear them with these. I don't know that these will be different. I will definitely be playing around with that. And also, if you know of some that don't slip, let me know. But Christy did say, everything without mohair has been fine in boots, and all of the socks work well with lace-up shoes or just as house socks. I talk more about the making of these in my, my so-called Handmade Life episode 78 through say 80, but I did this little standalone video for those of you who don't like the ramble, but do like the stash busting and do like the Christmas gifts because I think this is a really good like, I feel like I'm providing a service to you by telling you about these. I don't know about you, but I really don't enjoy obsessing and spending every waking moment on a Christmas gift all the way up into Christmas just to have someone open the gift and be like, oh, look, it's handmade, rustic. I feel like a quick weekend Hand knit is great to give as a gift. And I just think everyone loves cozy house socks. So for all of you fellow last minute gift givers, failed second sock knitters, and for everyone who has mismatched wool of the Andes squirreled away in the corner of closets and baskets all over your house, this little video was for you. Happy fall knitting.